The wet bulb temperature is the temperature a parcel of air would have if it were cooled to saturation by the evaporation of water into it, with the latent heat being supplied by the parcel. A wet bulb thermometer indicates a temperature close to the true temperature. The wet bulb temperature is the lowest temperature that can be reached under current ambient conditions by the evaporation of water only. It is the temperature felt when the skin is wet and exposed to moving air. Wet bulb temperature is largely determined by both actual air temperature and the amount of moisture in the air. General, the thermodynamic wet bulb temperature is the minimum temperature which may be achieved by purely evaporative cooling of a water-wetted, ventilated surface. For a given parcel of air at a known pressure and dry bulb temperature, the thermodynamic wet bulb temperature corresponds to unique values of relative humidity, dew point temperature, and other properties. The relationships between these values are illustrated in a psychrometric chart. For dry air, air that is less than saturated, the wet bulb temperature is lower than the dry bulb temperature due to evaporative cooling. The greater the difference between the wet and dry bulb temperatures, the drier the air and lower the relative humidity. The dew point temperature is the temperature at which the ambient air must cool to reach 100% relative humidity where condensate and rain form. And conversely, the wet bulb temperature rises to converge on the dry bulb temperature. Cooling of the human body through perspiration is inhibited as the wet bulb temperature of the surrounding air increases in summer. Other mechanisms may be at work in winter if there is validity to the notion of a humid, or damp cold. Lower wet bulb temperatures that correspond with drier air in summer can translate to energy savings in air conditioned buildings due to reduced dehumidification load for ventilation air, increased efficiency of cooling towers, climate change, the upper limit for heat stress humans can adapt to is called into question with a 7 a euro a degree Celsius temperature rise, quantified by the wet bulb temperature, regions of Earth would lose their habitability. Thermodynamic wet bulb temperature, the thermodynamic wet bulb temperature is the temperature a volume of air would have if cooled adiabatically to saturation by evaporation of water into it, all latent heat being supplied by the volume of air. The temperature of an air sample that has passed over a large surface of liquid water in an insulated channel is the thermodynamic wet bulb temperature a euro it has become saturated by passing through a constant pressure, ideal, adiabatic saturation chamber. Meteorologists and others may use the term isobaric wet bulb temperature to refer to the thermodynamic wet bulb temperature. It is also called the adiabatic saturation temperature, though it should be pointed out that meteorologists also use adiabatic saturation temperature to mean temperature at the saturation level, that is the temperature the parcel would achieve if it expanded adiabatically until saturated. It is the thermodynamic wet bulb temperature that is plotted on a psychrometric chart. The thermodynamic wet bulb temperature is a thermodynamic property of a mixture of air and water vapor. The value indicated by a simple wet bulb thermometer often provides an adequate approximation of the thermodynamic wet bulb temperature. For an accurate wet bulb thermometer, the wet bulb temperature and the adiabatic saturation temperature are approximately equal for air-water vapor mixtures at atmospheric temperature and pressure. This is not necessarily true at temperatures and pressures that deviate significantly from ordinary atmospheric conditions, or for other gas or euro vapor mixtures. Temperature reading of wet bulb thermometer Wet bulb temperature is measured using a thermometer that has its bulb wrapped in cloth a euro called a sock a euro that is kept wet with distilled water via wicking action. Such an instrument is called a wet bulb thermometer. A widely used device for measuring wet and dry bulb temperature is a sling psychrometer, which consists of a pair of mercury bulb thermometers, one with a wet sock to measure the wet bulb temperature and the other with the bulb exposed and dry for the dry bulb temperature. The thermometers are attached to a swiveling handle which allows them to be whirled around so that water evaporates from the sock and cools the wet bulb until it reaches thermal equilibrium. An actual wet bulb thermometer reads a slightly different temperature than the thermodynamic wet bulb temperature, but they are very close in value. This is due to a coincidence, for a water-air system the psychrometric ratio happens to be close to 1, although for systems other than air and water they might not be close. To understand why this is, 
first considered the calculation of the thermodynamic wet bulb temperature. Experiment 1, in this case, a stream of unsaturated air is cooled. The heat from cooling that air is used to evaporate some water which increases the humidity of the air. At some point the water vapor in the air becomes saturated. In this case we can write the following balance of energy per mass of dry air. Saturated water content of the air, initial water content of the air, latent heat of water, initial air temperature, saturated air temperature, specific heat of air, experiment 2, for the case of the wet bulb thermometer, imagine a drop of water with unsaturated air blowing over it. As long as the vapor pressure of water in the drop is greater than the partial pressure of water vapor in the air stream, evaporation will take place. Initially, the heat required for the evaporation will come from the drop itself since the fastest moving water molecules are most likely to escape the surface of the drop, so the remaining water molecules will have a lower average speed and therefore a lower temperature. If this were the only thing that happened and the air started bone dry, if the air blew sufficiently fast then its partial pressure of water vapor would remain constantly zero and the drop would get infinitely cold. Clearly this doesn't happen. It turns out that, as the drop starts cooling, it's now colder than the air, so convective heat transfer begins to occur from the air to the drop. Also, understand that the evaporation rate depends on the difference of concentration of water vapor between the drop stream interface and the distant stream and on a convective mass transfer coefficient, which is a function of the components of the mixture. After a certain period, an equilibrium is reached. The drop has cooled to a point where the rate of heat carried away in evaporation is equal to the heat gained through convection. At this point, the following balance of energy per interface area is true. Water content of interface at equilibrium, water content of the distant air, mass transfer coefficient, air temperature at distance, water drop temperature at equilibrium, convective heat transfer coefficient, note that, is the driving force for mass transfer is the driving force for heat transfer. Let us rearrange that equation into. Now let's go back to our original thermodynamic wet bulb experiment, experiment 1. If the air stream is the same in both experiments, then we can equate the right hand sides of both equations. Rearranging a little bit. It is clear now that if then the temperature of the drop in experiment 2 is the same as the wet bulb temperature in experiment 1. Due to a coincidence, for the mixture of air and water vapor this is the case, the ratio being close to 1. Experiment 2 is what happens in a common wet bulb thermometer. That's why its reading is fairly close to the thermodynamic wet bulb temperature. Experimentally, the wet bulb thermometer reads closest to the thermodynamic wet bulb temperature if, the sock is shielded from radiant heat exchange with its surroundings. Air flows past the sock quickly enough to prevent evaporated moisture from affecting evaporation from the sock, the water supplied to the sock is at the same temperature as the thermodynamic wet bulb temperature of the air. In practice the value reported by a wet bulb thermometer differs slightly from the thermodynamic wet bulb temperature because, the sock is not perfectly shielded from radiant heat exchange, air flow rate past the sock may be less than optimum. The temperature of the water supplied to the sock is not controlled, at relative humidities below 100%, water evaporates from the bulb which cools the bulb below ambient temperature. To determine relative humidity, ambient temperature is measured using an ordinary thermometer, better known in this context as a dry bulb thermometer. At any given ambient temperature, less relative humidity results in a greater difference between the dry bulb and wet bulb temperatures the wet bulb is colder. The precise relative humidity is determined by reading from a psychrometric chart of wet bulb versus dry bulb temperatures, or by calculation. Psychrometers are instruments with both a wet bulb and a dry bulb thermometer. A wet bulb thermometer can also be used outdoors in sunlight in combination with a globe thermometer to calculate the wet bulb globe temperature. Adiabatic wet bulb temperature the adiabatic wet bulb temperature is the temperature of volume of air would have if cooled adiabatically to saturation and then compressed adiabatically to the original pressure in a moist adiabatic process. Such cooling may occur as air pressure reduces with altitude, as noted in the article on lifted condensation level. This term, as defined in this article, 
may be most prevalent in meteorology. As the value referred to as thermodynamic wet bulb temperature is also achieved via an adiabatic process, some engineers and others may use the term adiabatic wet bulb temperature to refer to the thermodynamic wet bulb temperature. As stated in another section, meteorologists and others may use the term isobaric wet bulb temperature to refer to the thermodynamic wet bulb temperature. The relationship between the isobaric and adiabatic processes is quite obscure. Comparisons indicate, however, that the two temperatures are rarely different by more than a few tenths of a degree Celsius, and the adiabatic version is always the smaller of the two for unsaturated air. Since the difference is so small, it is usually neglected in practice. Wet bulb depression The wet bulb depression is the difference between the dry bulb temperature and the wet bulb temperature. If there is 100% humidity, dry bulb and wet bulb temperatures are identical, making the wet bulb depression equal to zero in such conditions. Wet bulb temperature and health Living organisms can only survive within a certain temperature range. When the ambient temperature is excessive, humans and many animals cool themselves below ambient by evaporative cooling of sweat. This helps to prevent potentially fatal hypothermia due to heat stress. The effectiveness of evaporative cooling depends upon humidity. Wet bulb temperature, or more complex calculated quantities such as wet bulb globe temperature which also takes account of solar radiation, give a useful indication of the degree of heat stress and are used by several agencies as the basis for heat stress prevention guidelines. A sustained wet bulb temperature exceeding 35 AA degrees Celsius is likely to be fatal even to fit and healthy people, and clothed in the shade next to a fan. At this temperature we switch from cooling the skin, to warming it. A sustained wet bulb temperature exceeding 35 a degree, is a threshold at which the resilience of human systems is no longer able to adequately cool the skin. A study by NOAA from 2013 concluded that heat stress will reduce labor capacity considerably under current emissions scenarios. See also, wet bulb potential temperature, dry bulb temperature, dew point, atmospheric thermodynamics, references. External links, three ways to get wet bulb temperatures for engineers, wet bulb chart for snow making, indirect evaporative cooler cools below wet bulb. Online calculator returns wet bulb temperature for given dry bulb and relative humidity, shortcut to calculating wet bulb.